malaplasty has been a great addition to our practice. It has really provided a great, safe glaucoma surgical option, and we just keep using it more and more and getting better and better results as we go along. What I did when I decided to move forward with canaloplasty was I went through my day and I just made a mental note of how many patients I ran into who would benefit from a safe glaucoma procedure. At the end of the week, I had a fairly good number almost every week. That's how I knew I could really use a safe glaucoma procedure in my practice. Because canaloplasty has such a wonderful safety profile, you can offer it earlier in the treatment paradigm for glaucoma. And that really is the big difference with traditional glaucoma surgeries. Because of that, I break patients down to those, of course, with non-controlled glaucoma. They need a glaucoma operation. And then there's a whole other category of mostly cataract patients who are on two glaucoma medications. They may be fairly well controlled or they may not be, but those patients can really benefit from a canaloplasty procedure. And so we're expanding our indications to virtually any patient who undergoes a cataract operation is on two glaucoma medications. So the patients who do best are patients with normal angle anatomy or fairly normal angle anatomy that you can get the catheter around on. Patients with a lot of PAS, very narrow angles, a lot of scarring, status post aggressive trabeculectomies with posterior trabeculocytes, they're really not very good candidates for canaloplasty. Now, how do I find patients who make good canaloplasty candidates? Pretty much now, in my practice, any patient who is on glaucoma drops and considering cataract surgery is a canaloplasty candidate. I'll often discuss with patients that as long as we're in the operating room uh, performing surgery to remove their cataract, that it's worth considering also going ahead and treating their glaucoma with canaloplasty. Because the risks of canaloplasty are so much lower than trabeculectomy, it's really uh, something that, that makes perfect sense to the patient, and it certainly makes perfect sense to me. So that's oftentimes where my canaloplasty patients come from are simply my cataract surgery patients who have treated ocular hypertension or glaucoma who are on drops. Other things to consider. Patients who are on drops but are having difficulty because they have very dry eyes. You know, we know that glaucoma medications do worsen ocular surface disease and at least in my practice, which involves a lot of elderly patients, I have quite a few miserable patients who have ocular surface disease and are being treated for glaucoma. And one of the things that can be done to reduce their misery is to actually find a way to get them off of their glaucoma drops. And canaloplasty is, is in my experience, one of the successful ways to actually treat dry eye or ocular surface disease in a glaucoma patient who's on drops. Uh, the patients I recruit for canaloplasty are patients that have been on maximum meds and are not controlled, that have um, defects in their uh, visual field and uh, defects in their optic nerve, of course. Patients in that category also who are intolerant to medications. Some of them don't like the effects of the medications. We've all been through that with our patients. Um, and also people who just don't want to be on medications for one reason or another. If they really have glaucomatous optic nerve damage, I think canaloplasty is a great choice. And those who make the best candidates, I think, are actually normal tension patients, normal tension glaucoma patients, and steroid induced glaucoma patients. Um, and of course open angle patients. Uh, I found it to work in young people who've had severe uh, steroid induced glaucoma and they've done very very well.